So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of universal gates. Um, in order to have this conversation, we actually need to talk about a couple of new logic gates that we haven't yet seen before. Um, the first logic gate that I want to talk to you about is a NAND gate. So a NAND gate looks like this. You can see over here the symbol for a NAND gate is an AND gate with an inverter attached to the output. So NAND actually stands for not AND, the inverse of AND. And if you look at the truth table, it makes sense. You can see that the output of this truth table is the opposite, the complement, if you will, of an AND gate. The second type of gate that I want to introduce you to is called a NOR gate. Again, you can see from this symbol here that a NOR gate looks like an OR gate with an inverter attached to the output. So NOR stands for not OR. And again, if you look at the truth table, it looks like it's the exact complement of an OR gate where if both inputs are low, it's high, and then for all the in input combinations, the output will be low. So why do we call these universal gates? There's actually a very good reason, and that reason is that uh, with these gates, you can construct any of the other gates that we've um, already been talking about in this course. So if we take NAND gates, for example, I can take a NAND gate and turn it into an inverter, an AND gate, or an OR gate using the configurations that you see here. So if we look at the inverter, for example, you see that I've got both inputs wired together so that if A is high, according to our truth table, both inputs will be high, which means that the output will be low. And if A is low, then both inputs will be low. And again, according to our truth table, the output will then be high, just like an inverter. You can see the configuration for an AND gate is just a NAND gate with an inverter attached to the end to to counteract the inverter that's part of the NAND gate, right? And then finally, an OR gate is a NAND gate with two inverters attached to the inputs. So using this NAND gate, we can actually construct any logic gate that we've currently seen before, um, but we can actually take that a step further. Using NAND gates, we can actually construct any logic circuit that we want, any circuit at all. And this has some important consequences. Um, one consequence of this is that when we're constructing circuits, uh, if we want to use only NAND gates, that's going to simplify the circuit building process. We no longer have to worry about creating many different types of gates. We can focus on just creating one type of gate and then wiring those gates together in the configurations that we want to produce the types of digital logic that we need. Another important implication of using only NAND gates is that they require fewer transistors than AND gates and OR gates, for example. Uh, fewer transistors means that I can fit more of them onto a chip and it actually means better performance as well, as we're going to talk about in future classes. So a NAND gate is one type of universal gate. A NOR gate is also a universal gate. I can construct these gates using only NOR gates as well. I'm not going to show that to you right now, but that's something that we, we might see in future classes. So now that we have this idea of constructing our digital circuits using only NAND gates, right? we need some techniques then to um, convert our existing digital circuits that use ANDs and ORs into circuits that use only NAND gates and maybe a couple of inverters. So here are some handy tips for conversion. Um, over here on the left side you can see that a NAND gate is equivalent to an OR gate with both of its inputs inverted. We actually saw that on the previous slide. Here's a NAND gate with both of its um, inputs inverted to give us an OR gate. So this is kind of the opposite side of that particular equation. Right? Over here we can see that I can construct a NOR gate out of an AND gate with both of its inputs inverted. So using these conversion principles we can take a gate, we can take a circuit rather, that's comprised of ANDs and OR gates and turn them into gates that use only NANDs or only NORs. Um, the problem that we run into is how do we get these circles, how do we get these inverters inserted into our circuits. Well, let's take a look at a couple more con concrete examples. Here's an example of a very simple circuit that uses two AND gates and an OR gate. And if I could somehow get some inverters on the ends of these AND gates, that would make me very happy because then there would be NAND gates, which is what I'm ultimately after. I can put inverters here if I want to on these wires, but that would change the behavior of the circuit. However, if I put two inverters in on each wire, those inverters cancel each other out and the circuit has the same behavior. So on this top wire, for example, I would put two inverters. One turns this into a NAND gate and the other one will attach onto this OR gate, right? And I'd do the same thing for the bottom wire as well. 
that would lead to a configuration that looks kind of like this. Now we've made a step in the right direction. You can see I now have two NAND gates. I had zero NAND gates before. Now I have two, that's good. But I still have this OR gate over here. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice an OR gate uh, that has two inverters is actually something we've already seen before. In fact, we saw it on this previous slide that shows such a configuration is equivalent to another NAND gate. So that means we can perform that substitution and what we're ultimately left with is three NAND gates with the exact same behavior of the circuit that we saw um, originally. So let's take a look at perhaps a more complicated example and talk about some other techniques. The first thing that you should do if if you're presented with a circuit like this, is look for common configurations. In fact, if you look here in front of the X output, you'll notice that exact same configuration of two ANDs and an OR gate that we just saw on the previous slide. So you can just go ahead and replace those with three NAND gates. Just above that, you'll see an OR gate with only one AND gate. This is similar to the one that we saw before, not exactly the same, but we could still replace it with NAND gates. This would turn into a NAND gate and we could invert this output of the OR gate. But up here, we'd still want to invert that output, or that input, rather, to this OR gate in order to convert it to a NAND gate, which would require inserting an extra inverter into the circuit. That's actually considered an OK trade-off. That's, uh, that's an uh, OK sacrifice to make if it means getting rid of AND gates and OR gates. Finally, down here, we see this OR gate, right, which we would like to somehow convert into a NAND gate. Um, but that would require inserting potentially a lot of inverters. Or we could actually use um, some rerouting to help us with this particular problem. If you notice this bottom input here, it's taking in the value of D. Right? I also have D inverted as just a regular part of this circuit. So I can feed this inverted value of D into this OR gate, and that saves me one, trans one inverter. This is one inverter that I already had in the circuit. I'm just reusing it for the purpose of inverting this OR gate. And then I can insert the other inverter here, right, to satisfy the condition of converting this into a NAND gate. I would then have to insert two more inverters for this top input, one of which would be used to convert this into a NAND gate. And so ultimately, I only have to insert one more inverter here to turn this OR gate into a NAND gate. So if we apply all of these changes, here's what we're ultimately left with, right? You can see these would convert into two NAND gates. This would convert into our three NAND gate configuration that we previously saw. And then this would also convert into a NAND gate. The only thing, the only price we had to pay for these conversions is two inverters. Two inverters. Inverters are pretty cheap. They only require two transistors. So ultimately, this circuit will require less transistors than the original circuit that we started with. I'm not going to prove that to you right now. In fact, that's a question that I'm going to ask you uh, in class um, next time. So on the next video, I'm actually going to introduce um, one gate that you've already seen before quite a bit and another new gate um, that can be used for interesting purposes.